Hi guys, I just made a beautiful video about updating Arch Linux. <laughs> it was an SSD of Arch Linux and I get into this. This is the UFI BIOS Utility Advanced Mode. So this is a system, a motherboard. I suppose we can find the name somewhere. Not really seeing it yet, but um, voila, we'll go into the details a little bit and then we'll fix our snakes. What do we get? We stand up and we go to the shelf. What did you do prior to this? Always, you've done it already. This is my black savior. This is Arch, right? Doesn't matter if it's the one of this month, last year or 10 years ago. No, maybe not 10 years ago, but keep this one around, right? Doesn't have to be the very, very, very last one. I need to fix something, definitely, because the only thing I see, I'll show you later, is grub and one line go in here. <laughs> cool it's good that this happens i mean it's not good that this happens but i can make a tutorial how to fix all that okay so advanced cpu configuration let's tell you that the intel virtualization technology should be enabled otherwise vmware boxes qmu virtual box will not work enabled please thank you very much what else should i Go over the boot probably. The boot lower display is disabled. Fast boot is enabled. That's all good. And here we go. Setup mode. No? So advanced mode is what this is. There's also the easy mode, F7 down here. I rather have the advanced, so I see more options. We have the compatibility support module in my system anyway, right? And that's enabled, boot device control, the old stuff or the new stuff. You can say UFI only or both of them, BIOS and um, well, the choice, BIOS or, or UFI. So when I test my USBs, I test from time to time the old system, right? The BIOS system, if people have an old computer. The old computer has no clue what UFI is because it was not developed back then, right? So UFI is new, BIOS is old, remember that. And all the rest, yeah, that's not important for us. There is one thing that's important and that's going to zig your boot, right? No, there will be no windows on this machine ever. So not the Windows UFI mode, but an other OS, definitely an other OS. And that's enable platform key unloaded. And there are some, some keys that I don't know. Did I this? Don't recall if I did anything with it, but um, they're not going to be used, I think, because we choose other OS anyway. Down here, there's some text execute the Microsoft Secure Boot Check. Only select this option when booting on Windows or Fire Mode or other Microsoft Secure Boot compliant operating systems. And then other OS. Select this option to get the optimized function when booting on Windows non UFI mode and Microsoft Secure Boot non compliant operating system. So that's basically. And then you read a little bit more about all these things, but everything is set, right? So save changes and reset. I basically did not change anything, right? But um, we're gonna fake it and show you the beautiful greeting screen that I got after updating Arch Linux. Not okay. Look at this. Nice, right? You got to admit this is a beautiful welcome screen and then you say you have five firmware settings. What? <laughs> Going inside the USB. Then the soft reboot button to Tell it to reboot again and then F8, 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 F8 in my case. But there's also F2 and delete and F12 and it matters. It, it depends on your system. And you have to figure it out. And I have to tell boot from the SanDisk Cruiser switch. And off we go launching Arch Linux. There are, I think at least... 
between five, five, seven, eight videos about arch roof. And the main thing to remember is you can fix any arch link system with arch roof. Yes, I used to install a new system when this happened, right? But what if you watch some videos, get the knowledge of arch roof, and you don't have to change anything? Your system is back up and running after a while, right? So the thing is, what I'm trying to tell you guys is stop distro hopping, right? Start learning. You can disrupt all you want eh? from in the arch department. That's that's okay. That's all arch. But um, learn in depth about an operating system. Sit down and, and get it done, basically. So, Alice Block. Alice Block. Alice Block. Let's put you here. Maybe you see a little bit better like that. Probably will, right? So I have to look at the partitions. So it's a pizza, a big pizza, it's called SDA. And I sliced it in three pieces. So I, I read it with you, I, I don't know these things by, 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 by head, is that the expression? Out of memory, I don't know it. Huh? So SDA1 is too small, it's a megabyte. So that's gonna be the UFI. 14 gigabyte, that's also small. So that's gonna be swap. SDA3, ooh, that's the big guy, 318 gigabyte. So, Having settled on that, I am going to get my keys first. So I have Azerti, right? But then I'm going to mount the device SDA3 three, inside a folder. I can do it in another folder if I want to, right? but mount is there just for that reason. Mount. If you want to see already, ls and then go and have a look. ls mount. There is something in there. Yeah, I just mounted a device. A part of my pizza is in there. But boot isn't there, right? And boot is SDA2. So I need to mount the device SDA2 inside mount Eric. And in there, there will be boot, right? And EFI. That's it. Oh, <laughs> my mistake. SDA1, of course. So it says unknown file system type swap. And then, oh yeah, sure. SDA2 is a swap. So the pizza is wrong. The piece of the, piece of the pizza should be SDA1. And then it says nothing. <laughs> That's better, right? LS mount boot EFI. Aha, uh -huh, there he is. Okay, it's mounted, right? And then we go in there and we don't need to swap actually, um, don't need it, but you could. And since I'm lazy, I'm not gonna arch shroot inside mount. And we're in there. This is the system. We are in our system that crashed. So first thing I'll do is see if there's Linux and Linux headers. And maybe, maybe see if I do this, right? So the databases come in. I want to have the databases in and then I get the kernel back in and see if everything that is supposed to be there is there. I need to have a kernel. I need to have the latest system D. I need to have grub and configuration should be correct. This isn't an NVIDIA system, so I don't have to worry about that. Hmm, we could have a look if all the XF86 uh, for the video things are not there, which is okay if they're there, right? We've had years. I've had them for years, no problem, but we started in April to remove them. But this is Arch, so they will be not there. Nevertheless, a good check. And then, could not connect as the package kit, that's okay. I don't worry about the package kit. 
now let's do it clear so we are back at the screen at the top somewhere right so it can follow a little bit better like this maybe so we've got our kernel we were missing stuff in the grub so the reflex should be do we have grub sure we have grub we have something called fix grub is that present no we don't so i go to the other computer because that's the thing about aliases once you've made them the thing is you forget the code and that's good because that's why it's there it's called install grub efi that's it and the alias install grub efi contains contains sudo well we're we're already sudo right but grub install target equals x86 underscore 64 is that correct yes efi so grub install target x86 underscore 64 uh -huh. okay and where should we put it in the efi directory and then you tell where it is boot efi check check now typos i don't see any so enter and then we do an update grub but do we have it on this arch installation grub okay so our alias update grub is basically this make grub make config and then minus o that's a zero eric minus o boot and then no capital where are my fonts where are the big caps lock the tripod isn't standing in front of me between my hands <laughs> it's difficult to read grub and then grub dot c f g c f g typos grub make configuration minus output to boot grub grub c f g enter uh-huh give me the list of of boot and we see kernels in there maybe you don't see it so let's go up again it's trying to focus i see now maybe you'll see it right so that's the boot thing it has something in there we have um, installed so what we do did we do linux kernel did not do systemd yet not that it's needed but that's something you might consider as well so you go i've actually never done that systemd because voila systemd is there these are the systemd stuff let's see if we can remove stuff from here these are all the things that we've installed nothing more nothing less okay I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna see if this works exit so we're out of the arch root environment so we can do a sudo reboot we have to type it because we're an arch not sr and hopefully everything is fixed if not guys pff, clean install 15 minutes later you have got a new system right it's, it's that easy if it's still too tricky too difficult and this is an x4 not a butter of s right so it's it is it is what it is and gradually over time you'll get more knowledge so be patient with yourself and watch videos watch videos watch videos from time to time anyway i hope i've got my arch back so this is my greeting screen 
and this is KDE there she is again and I can add this to the list of videos because I had a video right I created the video about updating so home uh, in here I suppose somewhere I have to see if I got the video and otherwise it will be without any video but that's for another moment to test out there and look at that on my other screen I have two screens welcome to KDE Plasma so a new version I suppose page one two powerful when needed you have to admire the complexity and the, the yeah the it's complete right the feeling is with all these settings it's you can do anything that's how it feels anyway to me right enjoy Arch Linux and any Arch Linux based operating system out there